Friday, this is Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance. Today, I want to talk to you about low testosterone levels in men, or men are calling male andropause. We're seeing this, I'm actually seeing this in younger and younger um, men these days, but we're seeing it quite often. I'm getting emails um, from my blog, from my YouTube page, from the website, I'm getting calls from people. I'm seeing it on certain forums that we have all these men running around with low testosterone levels. Well, this is a huge epidemic. It can actually come from many different areas. Well, let's research this just a tad, just a little, and you can do a little bit more on the research on your own, but let me give you some direction. Let's take a look at, first of all, what is testosterone used for in the body? Well, in men, it's produced in the testes, women, it's produced in the ovaries, and in both, it's actually produced in the adrenal glands. It's a super, super important hormone. It's just not for muscle building. Everyone thinks it's, well, it's anabolic, it's testosterone, that's the only thing it's used for. Well, of course, it's used during puberty secondary to the sexual change, both men and women. You'll see rises and declines and fluctuations. It's found in every single body tissue in the human body, every single body tissue. So obviously, it's a very, very important hormone. It promotes tissue building, which we kind of mentioned a little bit earlier. It's anabolic. It builds tissue. It's used in protein synthesis and oxygen uptake in the tissues when working out and after working out, as well as when you're walking around and doing whatever. So it's super, super, super important to muscle tissue health and um, muscle building and things like that, and healing and recuperating and regenerating. It's used in the immune system, and we see a lot of people nowadays that have weakened immune system. It's actually used to help regulate blood pressure, regulate cholesterol. A lot of these hormones that we have actually help regulate cholesterol. And it's actually used um, in the regulation of certain moods and certain behaviors like motivation, um, depression, low levels have been researched to show that low levels of testosterone, uh, one of the signs and symptoms of depression, as well as aggression. So there is a list of some of the things that testosterone, is, that it does for you. Well, let's look at certain factors that actually are affecting or causing low testosterone levels. Well, if you look at a hormonal chart, and we'll keep it simple, we have cholesterol, which is a precursor to every single hormone in your body. That's why cholesterol are good fats, saturated good fats, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, fish oils, collar oils, all these things are so good for our body besides producing uh, anti-inflammatory prostaglandins and being antibacterial, antifungal, they actually are precursors to every hormone in your body. After that, we have pregnenolone. Pregnenolone is a precursor to progesterone and cortisol and, and um, aldosterone. Actually, pregnenolone is a precursor to DHEA, as well as your estrogens and testosterone. We'll just keep it simple, okay? So it's super, super important. So we look at the pathway, if you can remember that. Well, one of the reasons we're seeing low testosterone levels in men is because of what's called estrogen dominance. We're seeing this in women. This was coined by Dr. Lee, but we're seeing this more and more in men, secondary to chronic stress, secondary to a lot of xenoestrogens in the environment, secondary to a lot of BPA particles in cans, in bottles, plastics, um, hygiene products, women using creams and, and rubbing up against their, their husbands. Um, but there's some type of chronic stress affecting the hormonal pathway, making the body steal pregnenolone to overproduce um, cortisol to fight stress, inflammation, regulate blood pressure. And you start to see testosterone levels diminish, but because of all these xenobiotics and xenoestrogens in our environment, in our water, in our food, um, the soy, men drinking soy milk, all these things can slowly increase the estrogen levels, or what happens is it actually lowers the testosterone levels, lowers the progesterone levels, and your ratio from those to estrogen is actually low, so you're considered estrogen dominant. Well, there's a problem with this because what typically happens is with this type of lifestyle or being bombarded with estrogen, as well as a, a diet that's high in refined carbohydrates, processed carbohydrates, box, canned foods, sugars, what happens is there's an enzyme, it's called the aromatase enzyme. It's actually, it's actually used in the liver during phase one detoxification. The liver actually uses it in phase one detoxification with protein and basically adequate protein intake to detoxify any excess estrogen metabolites in the body. Well, aromatase um, is actually found in a lot of other tissues and they're linking this to certain cancers. Like it's found in the brain, the heart, the blood vessels, the muscle, the bone, um, the urogenital area, the testes and the vagina. 
So you can, it's found everywhere in adipose tissue. Well, when you have increased aromatase um, levels in the body, you typically see estrogen dominance. And what this means is any of the precursor hormones that are going to make testosterone or make any other hormone are actually going to be converted into producing estrogen. So you overproduce estrogen. So when you have increased aromatase levels, you overproduce estrogen. We're seeing this commonly in men because of the lifestyle that's out there, our environmental water, our foods, our soy, the, the increased xenoestrogens, the diet. But we're seeing this because they have the increased uh, aromatase enzymes because of liver detox problems, a stressed liver, inflamed liver, a fatty liver, poor um, protein intake. They're being bombarded by toxins all the time. They're eating a diet that's high in refined carbohydrates and sugar that's box canned and pretty much dead. Um, and this whole combination overproduces these aromatase enzymes, which basically helps the body convert any of these hormones into estrogen. And at the same time, because they have these liver detoxification problems, they have a higher time detoxification estrogen into the body. So they become estrogen dominant. Another factor that we see is clinically is obesity. It's been shown that the amount of abdominal fat in the midsection, usually where there's cortisol receptor sites, and on the side there's insulin receptor sites, you see a high incidence of increased aromatase enzymes in the body. Um, these increased aromatase enzymes leading to the increased estrogen. Estrogen is a fat-storing hormone. It's produced in fat cells, and it's stored in fat cells. So the fatter you are, the more estrogen you produce. It doesn't if you're a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. And the other thing is increased sex hormone binding globulin. This is a protein that's bound to testosterone in the blood. Um, so any of these that are bound to this are inactive. And they've shown that men that have high levels of um, sex hormone binding globulin will have low testosterone levels because the hormone is bound to this protein in the blood and you can't use it. So how do we test for testosterone levels? Well, my, my best recommendation is saliva tests. These are the unbound hormones. They're not bound to a protein. They'll give you the actual level. Now, it varies per person and per age and per what's going on, so I'm not going to give you the norms. It's going to get too technical. Blood test is testing not the free testosterone. It's testing the testosterone that's actually bound to the sex hormone binding globulin or the albumin. It actually can be bound to the protein albumin in the blood. And it's not active. It's not free testosterone. It can't be used. It's actually been shown that less than 2% of the testosterone in the blood can actually be used by the body. Less than 2%. So why are we doing blood tests to test testosterone? Well, testosterone in men, low testosterone levels have been linked to low libido, erectile dysfunction, metabolic syndrome, abdominal weight gain, um, weight gain around the midsection like a tire, low bone density, osteoporotic issues, and we're seeing this commonly, commonly in men nowadays, depression, Alzheimer's disease, and diabetes mellitus. Well, this is what we're seeing in men all over the place, and it's a chronic stress that's coming from somewhere. It's also been linked to low HDL levels, high triglyceride levels, Increased glycation in the body, heart failure, prostate cancers. Prostate cancer is a huge one because a lot of the receptor sites on the test on the prostate are regulated by um, estrogen. So how do we deal with this? Well, one of the things you can do, you want to do a lab test through biohealth or metametrics for your adrenal glands. The second thing, treat them. Third thing, alter your diet, lead an organic lifestyle, get enough sleep, drink enough water, do look at all the stresses in your life and find what's chasing you. But one thing you want to do is you want to look at these um, inhibitors. One of them is called indole-3-carbinol. Another one's called DIM, methane. This one in the body is broken down into DIM. This one is just absorbed by the body. So it depends who you want to use it with. If they have gut problems, don't do, use this. Use this because they can just absorb it. If they don't have a gut problem, use this because they can break it down into this. These two are actually found in cruciferous vegetables. They're phytochemicals. They actually help the body detoxify estrogen and metabolize estrogen. So you can use it with people, and you want to do the 205 from BioHealth if you do this lab test, that have excess estrogen levels, increased aromatase enzymes, because what this will do is actually help lower them so the body can start converting the precursor hormones into testosterone. So it's a long, complex situation. You want to look at diet, you want to balance the adrenals, you want to look at hormones. Do they have low testosterone, high estrogen, or just low testosterone? If they don't have high estrogen, don't give them to it. Just change their diet and treat their adrenals. Look at their stressors. So hopefully you've learned th something today. It's a big topic. There's a lot going on. But hopefully it sparked something in your head so you can start doing some research into diet. Look in your adrenal glands. Look at your stressors. And hopefully give you some supplements to increase the vitality in your life. Peace.